getting back into some more technical elements, we've got a presentation now from the co-founder of CryptoEconomics.Study, Jinglan Wang, to speak about hash time lock contracts and incentives. Come on up. Bitsy's time. 
time, Bitsy can't spend the funds that she locked up because of the time lock. So Bitsy is subject to the negative effects of the exchange rate fluctuations while Ethel just waits to see if she can take a cut. Some people are like, oh my god, Jane, it's not really a problem. First of all, griefing in this manner is going to make it really untrustworthy. People are going to be like, Ethel is such an asshole, we're not going to trade with her, and her reputation is going to be ruined, and she can never do this attack again. Okay. Claim two, people say, you know what, the timeouts are so short that the exchange fluctuations are negligible, and it's really not a big enough hit for it to be an issue. Well, I disagree. <laughs> Claim one, which is reputation affects how you execute this attack because you want your peers to trust you. The problem with that is that it depends on your reputation. If identities are cheap to create, or as anonymity increases, this claim is more tenuous. Timeouts are short, it's not really a free option, and therefore not a problem. That's claim two. Well, Ethereum and Bitcoin are two independent networks that process time relatively and asynchronously. This means that when I'm setting the timeout with my counterparty, I have to make sure that there's enough overlap in the timeout that I have time to publish the proof to my network, my counterparty has time to publish the proof to her network, and I can't assume that the network is all Gucci product. I have to make sure that this timeout holds up even in adversarial conditions. Oh, that sucks. Those claims have been shut down. What are we going to do now? So, Interledger has proposed streaming micropayments. There are some types of payments that have to be made as one lump sum, but Interledger is saying, okay, maybe Bitsy and Ethel can just continuously send each other tiny micropayments, tiny amounts of cryptocurrency that fluctuates and adjusts with the exchange rate. The new problem that you get here is that if Etsy or Bethel go offline, Etsy or Bitsy, Ethel or Bitsy go offline, then you only have a partially full payment. So depending on who you are uh, or what service you provide, this may or may not be a problem. Well, that's not really a perfect solution. And I don't really know of any perfect solutions. There is a path. If you go on cryptoeconomics.study, you can learn about the incentive design mechanisms, general cryptoeconomics, basic game theory, and cryptography, and who can be the one to start thinking about HTLCs and the free option problem. So maybe one of you guys is going to figure out how to defeat Grandma Ethel. Thank you, everyone.